In Colorado, a billion dollar agricultural and manufacturing industry has emerged in a blink of an eye. Since commercial recreational marijuana became legal here in January 2014, there are now more pot shops in Denver than Starbucks. Hundreds of huge warehouses throughout the state have been converted into high-tech growing operations. They have thousands of plants, high wattage lights, numerous rooms, high security, CO2 enrichment, fumigation. Meanwhile, a demand for marijuana products such as concentrates, edibles, drinks, and lotions has led to enormous growth in pot extraction facilities. The process typically uses potentially flammable liquids like butane and propane as a solvent to extract THC, the psychoactive chemical in marijuana. The finished product is a sticky amber goo that can be more than 80% pure THC. In being the first to legalize recreational pot, Colorado has been a de facto test lab for other states looking closely at legalization. In 2016, for instance, voters in five states will consider legalizing and taxing marijuana. Several other states will consider medical pot. I traveled to Colorado in July to see how Colorado's public safety agencies have dealt with exponential growth of the marijuana industry in their state. We went to Breckenridge, Boulder, and Denver to speak with firefighters, fire chiefs, police officers, equipment manufacturers, growers, and business executives about the regulatory and safety challenges and how all the stakeholders have worked together to create a framework most now consider safe and fair. It was not an easy process. When Colorado's legal medical marijuana industry started taking off around 2010, there were few rules. Many of the Colorado public safety officials I spoke with refer to this time as the wild, wild west of legal pot. But over the last several years, oversight and regulation has come a long way. In 2016, the city of Denver adopted its first marijuana chapter in its fire code. Meanwhile, the Colorado Fire Marshals Association also put out a reference guide for jurisdictions. It collected various code provisions that apply to the marijuana industry, including the National Electrical Code and NFPA 58 Liquefied Petroleum Gas Code. The Grove facilities I toured were impressive. They were state-of-the-art, they were tidy, with sophisticated monitoring systems, CO2 sensors and alarms, clear exits, and hardwired professional electrical systems. They had exhaust systems, automatic watering and fertilizing systems, and all sorts of other high-tech gizmos and gadgets. The people I spoke with were really, really smart. These weren't stoners. They were very professional. Like the grow houses I visited, the extraction facilities were professional industrial spaces. Air monitors are mounted on the wall. An alarm with red lights set to sound and flash when flammable gases in the room reach 25% of the lower flammable limit are also on the wall. The rooms are Class 1, Division 1 compliant, meaning all of the electronics are safe around flammable vapors, as mandated by the NFPA 70 National Electrical Code. Safety records at these extraction facilities have been pretty good. There's been one notable exception. In New Mexico in 2015, an extraction facility exploded, seriously burning two workers. Better to find regulation is still needed in many places to ensure a similar incident doesn't happen again. Denver has laid the groundwork for much of the marijuana enforcement codes and standards out there, and NFPA is looking to expand on that. A special task group has been put together, and they've been working throughout the summer to draft a new chapter in NFPA 1 fire code that will be dedicated to marijuana. If you want to learn more about this issue, check out the September-October 2016 issue of NFPA Journal. The article is called Growing Pains, and it gets into all of this stuff and more. Or you can check out the article at nfpa.org slash marijuana. For NFPA Journal, this is Jesse Roman.